we're going to be discussing things that I wish I knew um, before becoming an entrepreneur, okay? Um, first things first, number one, nobody told me that I was going to have to fight for my life, okay? So if you're ready to get into this, let's do it. <laughs> guys welcome back to another video with Dorcas I am excited about this video I've been wanting to do this for quite some time I thought it would be a little different and a little addition to my entrepreneur businesswoman life side of me so as you can see from the title we're going to be discussing things that I wish I knew um, before becoming an entrepreneur, okay? Um, first things first, number one, nobody told me that I was gonna have to fight for my life, okay? So if you're ready to get into this, let's do Okay, it. so I'm back, guys. I have about 10 different um, points or tidbits that I wanted to get into um, in no particular order. Just some things that I jotted down that I thought to me were important or essential for someone that's wanting to go into business or someone that's wanting to venture out into entrepreneurship. I thought they would be some things that um, could be very helpful to you on the start of your new journey. Um, but before I get into that, I want to talk about a little bit about me and I guess my work history journey um so starting out in uh high school i initially thought i wanted to be in the medical field i thought i wanted to be an rn i thought i wanted to be a nurse of some sort but i quickly grew to learn that um i really didn't like school well let me rewind a little bit before that i thought i wanted to be an anesthesiologist not because i love the <laughs> the craft but because I knew the money was great okay I had researched it googled it and was like oh they make big money so I think I want to be an anesthesiologist realized that I would have to be in school for about nine years changed my mind real quick okay so then I was like okay I could be an RN cut that time in half won't take that long let's do that then as time got closer for me to make my decision I'm like dark is <sighs> I really didn't think I was going to just go to school. Hindsight being 2020, I wish I would have went off to school now, but things worked out the way they needed to. So after all of that, I decided to just go and get a trade. Okay. I, I guess naturally had the gift of being doing hair. So I started to um, go to cosmetology school. In that process of school though, I worked probably two small odd and end jobs because I just wanted to try it. I worked like retail and then I did like a security job. When I say I lasted maybe a week and a half, it just was not for me. So I'm like, okay, school, doing hair is your thing. So went to school, graduated, worked in a salon. Um, I quickly grew to know that I I wanted my own. I wanted to own my own salon. Didn't know when and how it was gonna happen, but I came to get my own space. Let's see, it's been seven years now. I've had my own brick and mortar salon and there has been some highs and lows, some ins and outs, ups and downs. And I wanted to just share with you some things that I feel like would have been helpful to know a little bit sooner than what I had to learn because basically I went into this thing blind like I'm like my husband yes he had some business sense but to me still being so fresh young and new to it I just thought man I just jumped off the porch and went at it so I had to learn as I go and just kind of pick up tips and trainings from taking classes courses going to seminars just researching um googling the internet became my best friend so um just a lot of trial and error and a lot of 
I say bought lessons that I had to <laughs> spend big money and pay for that um has taught me a lot. So I got my little list over here. So let me see the first thing that I have. First thing is, and it's in no particular order. I didn't make time to put these things and make them flow and all that. So the first thing I have down is charging your worth. Okay. This is something that I just had naturally. I don't know. I don't know. I, like when I was working in the salon with the other ladies, I started off as a shampoo tech and they used to let me tell the clients their prices because I was always so confident in being able to look you square in the eye and let you know this is going to cost A, B, C, and D. Okay. And not flinch at all because, and I think that came from knowing the value of your service, knowing the value that you offer to a client and not being afraid to charge what you feel like you're worth charging. A lot of times, um, being self-employed, you can tend to feel guilty about the things that you, or the prices that you charge. Um, but I've taken several educational courses and, and studied on, you know, the proper way, the proper scale to charge for things. And just over time, as far as experience, I feel like you're able to charge a certain level for your services. So that's something I feel like is very important. Um, know how to charge your worth and be confident in doing it because if not, you're not going to make any money. Like you set your prices, you are the one that basically oversee how you get paid. So you have to be able to know how to scale your pricing and charge your worth. Okay. Build a network and relationships with people. I think, um, being a person who, I don't feel like I'm a extroverted person. So this one was kind of challenging to me. And I had to learn the hard way that like, you ever heard people say closed mouths don't get fed. There's definitely truth in that. Being able to communicate, meet new people, um, go to different functions, different events can be very beneficial to you and your business. Um, my husband, Mr. Allen had to show me and teach me that because I feel like in our relationship or our business relationship, he's the more extroverted, um, good at communicating, good at meeting people, never meet a stranger. He's that um, person for us in our business relationship. He's a strong, that's his strong suit, I like to say. And so I have gleaned and learned a lot from him in that way because I'm normally or used to be the person that just shies away, not want to walk up to somebody to communicate, not want to, um, you know, spark a conversation and network. But I have seen so many great um, opportunities come out of just holding a conversation with somebody. Um, just letting somebody know, hi, I'm Dorcas. I'm a hairstylist. Hi, I'm Dorcas. I'm a salon owner here in Mobile, Alabama. You know, just being able to make yourself friendly can open up so many doors like you will not believe. Um, and I'm, I'm a living witness that not being so bashful, not being shy and passive can help you with great business opportunities. So building those networks and relationships with people can be vital to your business, okay? Hmm. This is, this is a good one for the social media world that we're in. Never vent or dump about your clients on social media. I have seen this so much because social media has, of course, grew and gotten so big and I see this all the time. I'm one. I choose not to do that. I choose to keep it professional, to keep all business off of all personal business and my feelings off of social media. Like so many people tend to, if something happens in their business, they tend to run to social media to talk about it, to vent about it, or pull out a video, pull out a camera and go live about it. I feel like keeping it classy, keeping it professional has gotten me a long way. Like anything that happens in the salon, it stays in the salon. Anything that happens behind my business, I feel like it should be kept 
to myself. Clients business, salon business, or you know, whatever your business is, should not be put out to the masses. I get it. There are so many times and situations to where you may feel like, you know what, I'm going to blast this person online or I'm going to, you know, call this person out. No, it is not worth the reputation of your brand. And I feel like I've carried my brand a long way for not having to put drama, put mess and things like that that are negative out on social media platforms. So I always say, keep it classy, keep it cute. You won't have to worry about that at all. So if I keep that a part of who I am, I don't have to worry about that. So no one can ever say that they've seen me talk negatively or blast anybody on social media. And that's even in my business life and my personal life. So if I keep it neutral across the board, I don't have to worry about messing up and making a mistake and putting something out there that does not have to be put out there. And another thing to add to that is don't talk about clients to other people. Don't talk about clients' business to other people. Like that is very unprofessional in my opinion. So if anybody knows me, I'm a, I strive to be a professional. I strive to, to uh, operate in excellence when it comes to my business, really on my day-to-day -day life. And so that is my goal, to keep things professional and as classy as I can. That way, because you never know who's watching. You never know who wants to come patronize you and your business just by seeing how you carry yourself on social media. So what you put out there, you can't take it back. So I always say, keep it, for prof keep it professional and you won't have to worry about any of those problems. Being multi-talented can be, um, or being multi-talented can have its pros and cons. And what I mean by that is, when I first started out, in the industry, I wanted to do everything, every aspect of the industry, I wanted to do it. And I think because they teach me that, or as far as cosmetologists, they teach you like all the aspects of beauty from A to Z, from nails, from makeup, from lashes, from skincare, um, manicure, pedicure, barbering, hairstyling. And so because I felt like they taught me everything, I felt like I needed to do everything. And starting out, yes, I did all the services. And that was mainly because I was building my clientele. I wanted to kind of get a feel for, you know, what my niche was or what I really, truly loved about it. But I quickly learned that I don't have to do everything under the sun. Even though I know how to do it, I don't have to do all of those things because I feel like something is going to go lacking. So if you're able to not necessarily just niche down on one thing, but out of a hundred things, don't do all hundred of those things. Like maybe do 10 of them and perfect those things. That way you can be great at those things that you offer. So that's just something I thought that is important to somebody who's just starting off in business. And that can go for any aspect. Like don't try to do you don't want to be a jack of all trades, basically, and a master of none. That's that's the bulk of what I'm trying to say. So hone in on your skills and really focus in on one or a couple of things that you're really good at and master those things. Tax laws. Tax laws and acquiring a CPA or accountant, or accountant and a bookkeeper. ASAP. I learned this the hard way. It is this probably one of the first things you need to do is get some get an accountant on your team. That way you're able to know the laws, know what you need to be paying out, know how to keep up with your books and your finances because if not, you can run raggedy, okay? I am a witness to that. Starting out, I'm thinking, "Oh, I'm making all this money. Tax-free money." And I don't have to pay any of it back. But no, you have to, just as you would, you clocking in on somebody's nine to five corporately. You still have to pay all of those fees, all of those taxes. So it's very important to get you an accountant that can help you keep your books and finances in line. Because if you start off doing it the right way, you won't have to worry about in the long run things coming back 
to, you know, audit you on the back end. Okay. So that is very, very, very important. Invest in yourself. Investing is important. I feel like, um, it takes money to make money. So not oftentimes we start off with this large amounts of capital to be able to, um, you know, just jump out there and do exactly what you wanted to do, bring your vision to life with your particular business venture. So starting, I mean, investing in yourself will, I guess, show people that you're serious because if you're not willing to invest in yourself, no one else is going to be be able or willing to patronize you or invest in you with their money. Um, we've come across different business people, entrepreneurs, um, investors, and being able to sit down and talk with them to, I guess, know where their mind frame is or what they think about when they're considering uh, investing in someone um, really opened up my mind to being able to have money or put money aside to be able to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to invest in this class to be able to um, have the knowledge to move forward with this next business move that I'm trying to do. So being able to invest in yourself can help you go so much for further in your career or in your business than you may think. Your family and friends may not or most likely are not your target audience. Um, knowing your target audience is going to help you with your cash flow. So knowing when you when you you know launch your business, have your business plan in place or whatever, knowing that okay, I'm targeting this certain demographic of people is going to help you know how to push your product and market, you know, whatever your service is to a certain group of people. I had to learn starting out in business that, you know, initially you think, okay, these are my family. These are my friends. They're going to be my biggest supporters. They're going to spend the most money with me. You know, no, I had to learn. No, that is not the case. <laughs> that is not the case. A lot, not saying that they don't love you, that they won't support you, but most of the times you will get more support from people outside of your family, outside of your friend circle than you would, you know, with people that you know. Um, it's just what it is. Like, especially starting out building my clientele, you know, a lot of times I was like, why aren't they booking appointments? I, I was getting so sad and upset until I realized, Dorcas, you can't get mad because these people don't want to come to you. No, focus on the people that are your target client. I had to be able to put right down and develop who I wanted my target client to be. So that's all a part of having a business plan. Having a business plan may sound cliche, but I feel like it is a essential tool that you need before getting started in entrepreneurship okay having a business plan is going to give you your goals your vision your mission who your target audience is who your demographic is um what age group what working class of people like all the small little intricate details your business plan should have it in there which will set you up for success when targeting your target audience so keep that in mind Learn to do it yourself if possible. So when starting out myself, I didn't have a lot of capital. So I had to be the hairstylist. I had to be the cleanup person. I had to be the website developer, the graphic designer, the CPA, the finance person. I had to be the receptionist, the customer service department, the HR department. <laughs> You get my drift. So if you're able to do things yourself starting out that can save you a little money, I wouldn't recommend being your own CPA now. But if you have to be your own website builder, your own graphic designer, those are things that can save you tons of money um, starting out. Like if you have to do your own social media marketing, you know, you can cut costs in those areas. Um, at the same time, I feel like it's good to know how to do those things. That way, when it's time to start outsourcing those tasks to different people, you know what it entails, you know what it takes. So you're able to say, you know what, 
that's worth every dollar that you're asking me for because I know the work that goes into doing something like that. Knowing how expensive being a business owner can be. That's something <laughs> that I didn't know. Like I thought, okay, I go in and I make money. I make more money than I have to put out. And starting out, I really had to put out more money than I was bringing in. I'm like, man, I need to go get another job because this isn't working. It's not working. So knowing that this doesn't mean give up. It just means be able to go through the process or the journey of being able to, you have to put out money to be able to make money. So when I say put out money, meaning you have to invest in your marketing, you have to invest in education, you have to invest in great quality products. These things are going to bring you a return as, as time progress, as you build your clients, as people build trust in you and things like that. Have a marketing strategy and be sure it's something that you want. This goes back to knowing what you want to do before you get started. Like, don't just jump out and just do anything. Like, really um, think about it. Plan it out. Um, know whatever business you want to go into that is something that you love. Because having a passion for something is going to really make you get up every day and want to do it and want to perfect it and want to be better at it every day. So don't just pick some random thing that you feel like is going to uh, make you a lot of money like I was going to do. I was originally going to be in the medical field because I thought, man, they make a lot of money. I want to do that because I want it big money. But in reality, my passion for helping people is still in the same vein it's just that it's in the beauty industry. So I call myself the hair doctor. Like I didn't go and get my, go to school and get my degree, but I call myself the hair doctor because I feel like I'm a doctor in the sense of I get to help people feel beautiful. You know what I mean? I get to give you different uh, antidotes for treatments for your hair, for your skin, for your inside, your self care. So I'm still fulfilling my passion even though I didn't get my medical degree you know what I mean so that's the importance of finding something that you love and more so than the money I've heard before that if it's something that you will do for free with no money involved that's truly a passion and a purpose of yours so this is something that if I had to do it for free for the rest of my life, I would because I just love it just that much. So think about that when you're thinking about, you know, what's something that I want to go into business for? What's something that I want to do, you know, to be an entrepreneur or be my own boss? That is very important. And the last thing is to don't give up. I would be lying if I sit here and say, I didn't look back and say, you know what? I want to just go to corporate. I want to go get me a nine to five. I'm going to go back to school and find, get me another degree because this is hard. Um, but I have not given up. I chose to stay the course and keep working at it. So yes, it may be hard. Yes, it may be challenging. And there are a lot of ups and downs and a lot of things to learn when you're trying to be your own boss or when you want to be an entrepreneur. But it is so fulfilling. Like I'm able to, yes, I'm able to make my own schedule. I'm able to um, have the freedom to move around and do things that I need to do if need be. There are pros and cons with that because you have to have a lot of discipline when you're an entrepreneur so having been i and i am i feel like i'm a disciplined person even though i have my challenges i'm not perfect at all i'm still working on a ton of areas in my life as far as that but i feel like not giving up i'm happy that i didn't give up and i stayed the course because it has been so rewarding meeting all the new people I've met as far as professional people, clients that have turned into family, being able to hear people say, you know, that I've helped them in so many ways and I've made people feel better about themselves as a person because 
it's just so many different aspects and things that I deal with being a stylist that I never even thought like I didn't know that I was going to be somebody who would have to be a psychiatrist to some people or be a counselor to some people or I may have to be a prayer warrior one day I may have to be you know a, a nurse the next day so a friend a sister like it's so many different roles that I play in my career and I love it I love it I love it I wouldn't trade it because it has been so rewarding like knowing when you're you are operating and working in what your purpose is, is so fulfilling. So that's why it's important to really pray and be strategic to what you choose to go into when going into entrepreneurship. So that was my 10 little things that I wish I knew or someone you know would have told me and I wanted to share with you all about entrepreneurship. Um, I'm glad I was able to share this with y'all. Hopefully you enjoyed this conversation if you have any questions that you would like to add to it you can leave down in the comment section and i'll be sure to answer them if i can if it's too long of a question or if it's a ton more questions that you all will have i'll do another video along these lines um so hopefully i was able to help you or give you some type of insight on being a business owner being an entrepreneur it is um you're very rewarding and I think it's amazing if you choose to go that route so yeah guys thank you for watching this video thank you for making it this far and I'll see y'all down in the comments and in the next video